Hi, I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com and SoapQueen.com. Thanks so much for joining me on today's episode of Advanced Cold Process Soap Making. If you've never made cold process soap before, stop right now and watch the first four episodes on cold process soap making. And since this is an advanced episode, if you haven't made cold process soap before, but you've watched the episodes, try a few batches and get some basic batches under your belt before you attempt this. Today, we're going to be working on the ever popular funnel pour technique. It makes an incredibly unique bar of soap for each and every cut, and I can't wait to show you my special secret cut to really make all the colors and the design pop. Today, we'll be working with a five pound batch of soap and a fragrance oil that doesn't accelerate trace. I'm gonna be using cranberry fig from brambleberry.com. It's fine, you can use whatever fragrance you want, but make sure that there is nothing hinky that goes on with that fragrance, because you need a lot of time to work with this batch. We're gonna be making a five pound batch, splitting it into three colors, and then pouring in alternate colors through a funnel. I have my cold process recipe already fully prepped. All the oils are measured, the lye water is done, so we can just go straight into the fun part about making soap. makes this recipe shine isn't the ingredients, which are pretty basic, but it's the colors. You'll notice I've picked three very contrasting colors, which is one of the hints to making your funnel pour look great each and every time. I'm using one half ounce sweet almond oil and pre-mixing this with one half teaspoon of electric bubble gum. Then I've also pre-mixed one half ounce sweet almond oil with one half teaspoon of tangerine wow. To get the green color, it's a mixture of three colorants. One half ounce sweet almond oil again, one teaspoon of fizzy lemonade. Then it's one half teaspoon of green apple lab color and 50 drops of liquid blue. Now normally you think, boy, lab colors, they can bleed and make your lines not look very distinct. In this case though, we're not using very much of that lab color. So it's just enough to give a little bit of color pop, but not make your entire green bleed. Blend all this up with a little mini mixer and really keep blending. You wanna make sure that those colors are fully homogenized in there. One final step before we begin this project is to cover your work surface. This can get particularly messy when you're doing the funnel pour, so anything you have lying around that's gonna help protect your work surface is a good idea. All right, it's time to suit up for safety. Goggles on and gloves on. Don't want any lye burns. Now it's time to set up our funnel. A lot of people use chopsticks to set up their funnel. I prefer to use this clear container. Just cut out a circle in your clear container, stick the funnel in there, and then stick this entire contraption over the top of your five pound mold. I like to tape it in place, including the funnel, because I want my funnel to stay straight up and down the entire time. Now it's time to make our soap. Pour your lye water slowly over your stick blender. This helps to decrease the amount of bubbles in your recipe. Before you turn your stick blender on, make sure you tap that stick blender on the bottom of the bowl to burp the stick blender, getting out any extra bubbles that might be trapped in the stick blender. Blend using your stick blender until you reach a nice thin trace. Then it's time to separate the soap into two other containers. You're just gonna eyeball this, but you're looking for about three and a third cups of soap, so. And next container. And I'm just gonna leave the rest of the soap in this initial container. Then it's time for color. Tangerine Wow. Mmm, electric bubblegum. And our awesome green mix. Those look so pretty just sitting there, but it's time to whisk them in. Using your whisk, just mix in from lightest to darkest. I have three different whisks, but if you wanted to use the same whisk, just make sure you're starting from lightest color to darkest color, not the other way around. When those colors are fully mixed in, it's time to add your fragrance. I've separated my fragrance into three batches for very easy measurements. 
Now, I'm a big fragrance hound. I love my fragrance to still smell really strong. So I've done 1.6 ounces of fragrance per container. So just gonna dump those in. And I'm looking at this consistency and it's a little bit thinner than I'd like to see. So I'm gonna actually stick blend at this point. And it's just a very light touch of stick blending. You want to be working with a thin to medium trace. The funnel is centered. The fragrance and color are all in. I'm gonna start pouring. I like to count one, two, three to make sure I'm adding the same amount of soap per pour. I'm gonna start with the orange. Here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now it's very important that you keep your color order exactly the same. So I keep going orange, pink, green. Now, I see my texture is getting a little bit grainy. Grainy texture is too subtle to get on camera, but I really want you to be paying attention to the look and feel of your soap. If you start seeing it go a little teensy bit grainy, just take your whisk, give it a good stir so it's fully homogenized and a beautiful smooth texture, and then pour. After you've been pouring about a third into the mold, you'll notice it starts looking a little bit thicker in the middle. Just kind of shake that mold just a little bit to smooth down the entire soap. You'll notice it really helps to settle the soap in there. Alrighty, and we are going to end with this pink, the electric bubble gum, and it looks so amazing. I love the colors, they're so bright and pretty. And I think to get the fun off, I'm gonna take my glove off. Okay, here we go. Funnel off, don't drip in the soap. Gloves off, whew, goggles off. And now a final tip to help prevent soda ash. I'm gonna be using 91% rubbing alcohol and spraying it liberally on the top of my soap. It looks like I've got quite the mess going on, so I'm just gonna take a break and clean up before we do the final step. Okay, I'm gonna give this another spritz with rubbing alcohol, 91% rubbing alcohol and putting a cardboard piece over the top of this because I don't want my insulating towels to accidentally drop into the top of our beautiful soap. And then I'm just gonna put one towel over this and put it to bed. Since we mixed our oils and lye water at about 125, this soap should go through gel phase, which will help those colors really pop. Just set this aside in an area that it won't be disturbed for a good 24 hours. Through the magic of television, I made a couple loaves ahead of time. And molding these five pound loaf molds from Brambleberry is super simple. All you need to do is gently squeeze on the sides and then just flip this and flip the other eyelet and do that on the other side. Once your eyelets have been flipped, just get that tape off the sides of the mold, pull your sides down and lift your soap out. Then pull gently down on your freezer paper. Remember when we line our molds with freezer paper, we always do shiny side in, so that way it releases more easily. So this is how you'd normally cut your soap. You'd normally do about one inch slices and you do it vertically, but look at how this ends up looking. I mean, it's a cool bar of soap. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this bar of soap. I would be delighted if I got it. But we just went through a lot of work to make something that looks extraordinary. So check out what happens when we cut this entire loaf horizontally. First, we're going to use a ruler to mark off two and one eighth inches. If you're using the five pound brambleberry.com loaf mold, you'll get exactly eight blocks of soap using this method. Cut your blocks, separate them all. Now, I want you to take your block, turn it over on its side and cut it horizontally. You should have two bars of soap from that block and Look how amazing they look when you do it that way. We've gone from this to this. It's a pretty stunning departure, just changing the way we cut. Thanks so much for joining me on today's episode of Soap Queen TV. I really hope you guys get out your soaping gear and try this very fun technique. Until next time, happy soaping. Now, are you curious about what we're going to make? Haha, <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Once your eyelets have been flipped, use your fingernails to scooch that tape up. <laughs> scooch.